everyone it's brutal chaos welcome back to my channel today guys we're going to be checking out another video titled what's the best warhammer 40k faction slash army to start with this is going to be by brookie which he made another awesome video called every single warhammer 40k faction explained he actually had two parts we're going to break this up into two parts as well because it's a pretty long video like i said uh, I need to get some sleep today too as well. Uh, guys, I'm trying to pump out more content. Like I said, keep being awesome. I hope you enjoy my reactions. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking the video. And thank you for freaking leaving all your awesome comments, like I said. So without further ado, let's switch over, check out this video, and see what Bricky has to say about this because I'm sure it's awesome. I must say the support on my prior Warhammer video has been, to put it lightly, absolutely outstanding. I've not had a video perform that well in maybe three to four years, and it's also a breath of fresh air to be able to make a video on something on a whim, on Warhammer, a while very popular game, not a game that I ever really made videos on, and to have it perform as well as it does. You know, YouTube and the YouTube world doesn't like change very much. So yeah, man, he's got a point, but at the same time, sometimes change is good. Like I said, you got to keep, you know, it's nice to do something different sometimes and you can draw in some other people, man. And yeah, his other video, super awesome. Like I said, I highly recommend checking it out. And I also recommended it, or not recommended, I reacted to it on the channel if you'd like to see that as well. So it is incredibly heartwarming. But with that, it also came with a question that was always being asked to me ever since making that video. Hey, Bricky, what army should I play? So for this, my next major Warhammer video, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to go over all the different kinds of armies, just like we went with the main video, except instead of lore, we're going to be going through the different various ways of collecting the army, as in not only price-wise, but how many models you're going to need. They look so good. How old the model scopes are. And we're going to be going over the play styles of each army, respectively. Are they melee? Are they shooting? Are they a little bit of both? Elite armies with only 20 models on the battlefield? Or so beautiful. 20 models on the battlefield. We're going to be discussing all of those, what each army is about, and give you at least a decent run through of every single faction to allow you to make the conscious and intelligent choice on which army you want to play if you want to get into the tabletop of Warhammer 40,000. But first, before we start, I need to show you something. So I own an absolute like, boatload of wall art all across my house I received from cons. And so when I was contacted by... Alright, he's showing us stiff. Well, that's cool and all. We're going to get right back into the freaking Warhammer. Uh, like I said, tabletop is super awesome. I've still been learning myself and there will be more up on the channel. So we're going to uh, scroll a little bit further here try to get back into the Warhammer. Say something like, oh, this army hits on threes or fours or fives. What I'm saying is if they hit on threes that means if you roll a d6 and you throw it out there if you get a three four five or six anything three or higher then you hit your shot you've landed onto your target if i that doesn't mean you wound though say they hit on fours it's four and up fives five and up etc and finally we have things called stratagems i'm going to mention those a few times stratagems are like special abilities you can use after having a you gotta use a freaking cp though pool of command points that you get for building your army and you can kind of dole those out these special ability stratagems as you wish you ever played command and conquer uh, red alert 3 or, or perhaps uh, kane's not to cut them off in a lot like i said i just love checking out the video but a lot of times man the, the cp points can save you man you can re-roll some of those numbers like i said if you re-roll and you're not getting what you need sometimes that comes in clutch wrath my personal favorite was always Kane's wrath you know those little abilities on the side of the map it's like those let's start off with the number one best army you should collect for a new player space marines before we get into tactics before we get into super how cool play, one too remind you all of the most important rule the golden rule of collecting warhammer you will always have a better time with the army whose lore you like and design you prefer always buy the army you think are the coolest if you like undead egyptian space robots that have enslaved gods as weapons buy the damn necrons i don't care i mean he's making a freaking good point too like i said if you're collecting something you didn't enjoy you're not going to have fun and the other person's not going to have fun because he's going to see that you're not having fun and it's just going to be a buzz kill so great point I don't care if necrons are s tier or f tier by the damn Necrons, okay? If you love Viking aesthetic and you love Space Marines, get the damn Space Wolves. I don't care if they're S tier or F tier. <laughs> get the army that you love the lore and the design of first. 
Nothing sucks more than playing a meta army that some people might not even want to play you against because you're going super power gamer and having to paint and create an army that you don't like. Buzzkill. You think is the coolest. Golden rule. Big facts. Okay, Space Marines. So the poster boys of Warhammer are our first faction today, and I know when I said that the best army to collect all the new players are like, oh god, not the Space Marines, the generic ones. <laughs> and all the veteran players are going to say, oh god, not more Space Marine players I got to deal with. And the tournament players are already ready to hire a hitman to kill me. But I'm sorry. I know. I agree. Space Marines are... Whew, right now but they really are the best army if you are a new player space marines are your best bet they are the best army to collect if you are a new player and let me tell you why <laughs> number one space marines got all the lore they got a monopoly on lore they easily have the most fleshed out backgrounds of Dang. any of the characters or factions in warhammer space marines have the most books space marines are a huge part of the horus heresy just space marines will always have the most and they have the most depth to them number two that's space a lot marines are very easy to paint especially for new players when you get space marines you have a ton of variety of chapters and they all have a ton variety of colors and I was going to say, I've played the tabletop. I've played it through Steam on the tabletop simulator. I haven't gotten to play it in real life. I do not have any models yet, but like I said, I, I can't wait to one day get me some models and to freaking uh, put some on a shelf. I thought about clearing the shelf behind me, putting it over here and getting some models. Man, I'm, I'm kind of nervous to paint, but, you know, it'd be awesome to learn. Like I said, I've never painted in my life, but, uh, you know, I got a pretty good friend who will teach me, so... Like I said, can't wait for that. And they're also pretty easy. Space Marines are also very large, or at least larger than normal, so their canvas size is much bigger. Smooth armor, much easier to paint, especially their vehicles. And the paint schemes are easy. Ultramarines, blue, white scar, white, <laughs> imperial fist, yellow, salamanders, green. It's extremely easy to paint Space Marines. And for a new player, I would highly recommend them for that specific part because the painting and building is a massive part of this hobby. Number three, Marines are always huh. getting new models. They are always getting equal attention from Games Workshop. Even if they have just been updated, they will get updated again and again and again. And Beautiful. the Harlequins and Dark Eldar players are crying in a corner, but we don't care about them. Because <laughs> <laughs> but man, like, look at those models. Mwah. Beautiful. I got a new Primaris Lieutenant, and he's got a Skull Shield. That's cool. I don't know. They're always getting <laughs> new models, and while it may be a little excessive at times, they will always be updated, and your rules will always be changing, and therefore it keeps it very fresh if you're interested in playing them. Number four, you have a vast amount of data sheets and units at your disposal. See, in a codex, you have a part, after all the lore of it, after some of the keywords and art pieces and stuff, you have the data sheet section, where it goes over all of your units and what they do and their stats and everything, their special Different rules. guns. And so on and when you get to that spot however many units an army has depends on well, you know how many pages of data sheets is it take the adeptus custodies they have a very small amount of units and their standard codex of data sheets is only 11 pages long sisters of battle however a little more medium force they have 19 pages of data sheets Not bad. the imperial guard they have a much much larger they're huge amount of data sheets because they're such a large army they have 39 pages Dang. of data sheets. Space Marines? 56. Holy crap. 56 pages of data sheets for different kinds of units. It's That's a lot. It's a lot. at times because of the amount of characters and stuff, but still, they are all over the place. Their variety is endless, and it is being even more updated and added as time goes on. Which brings me to number five, and the most important of them all, Space Marines use every phase of the game. See, in Warhammer, That's there cool. are phases in each turn. Uh, we're just getting into ninth edition. I was going to say, spoiler, I guess for me, I've never done a psychic phase yet, so... Can't wait to try that one day. So we're getting something called the command phase soon, which is fine. But then we have the movement phase, psychic phase, shooting phase, the charge 
fight, and then morale phase. Now, the last three are kind of all packed into one, if I'm being perfectly honest. But the main thing is that a lot of armies might utilize some of these phases a lot more often than expected. Grey Knights are very big in the Psychic phase because they're all Psychers, and so they really have a lot there. While Tau don't have any Psychers, and they won't even use Not that the phase, Tau. they've got really damn good shooting. However, they don't have any melee, so they're not going to be using the Charge phase. Whereas, say, Slanesh Demons will use the Charge and Psychic phase plenty, but they won't be doing any shooting of like any kind pretty much the marines they will use every single phase and you can't get good at the game and get good at the phases unless you're able to use all of them and True. that's where space marines really shine you can play them however you want in any kind of role see if you are running let's say an iron hands or imperial fist army these are both oh, cool looking armies but you can still have good melee, where if you wanted to play a more melee-based army like Space Wolves or Blood Angels, you'd still have good shooting units. You could still do plenty in the shooting phase. You'd That's have a the mix. most important part. Space Marines will use every single phase, and they are very, very good at it. So that is the main five reasons why you should be playing, or at least you should try collecting Space Marines. And I know That's a I good don't point. need more Space Marines in tournaments, but it is the best decision. They're good to paint, they're good to collect, they're always getting updated, they got tons of units, they use every phase, and you can tailor them however you'd like. Plus, and this is kind of down the line, but eventually after playing them enough, you might understand which army you'd want to collect second. If you start collecting a little bit True. of Space Marines, you start realizing, oh, wow, I really think I'd prefer having more models on the table, or I wish I had tougher models. Then you can go for Tyranids or then Adeptus Custodians. It helps you figure out your second army a lot better. If you're a new player, you want to get interested in it, just do this. Go online, get yourself either, oh, or check eBay, because there's tons of offhand Marine stuff on eBay. Get yourself a pack of Intercessors or maybe a Tactical Squad. I'd say Intercessors because they're more modern, they're newer and more meta, and they're bigger for better paint canvases. Put them together with some glue, get some paint on them, try them out, and, and try getting into the game that way. I think it'd be a, a pretty smart and a pretty solid idea to get someone new into the hobby, and Space Marines just really are one of the better choices right now. Okay, whew. now that I'm done sucking as much Marine dick as <laughs> let's move on to the rest of the armies. And my personal favorite army at the current moment, the Imperial Guard or the Eftimia Tyrant. It is fucking the Imperial Guard. The Imperial Guard are my main army. They are what is known as a gunline horde. That's a lot. Army. Whereas Orcs and Tyranids have a horde army that has shooting, but it's more melee based, the Guard is going to be running 60 to 100 infantry men support walkers artillery batteries uh, aircraft drop that's trees, a lot tanks bigger tanks the guard is all about just blistering firepower now however the downside to this is that the guard while well trained are only four up well trained they hit on fours and they also do not have very good survivability guard stuff tends to be rather fragile they very rarely have any special saves to keep them from taking any damage uh, most of their stratagems aren't based around survivability but in fact more firepower guard don't shoot amazing with their four up accuracy but they make up for that with just sheer amounts of numbers of shots i don't care if my tank hits on fours when i've got fucking three of them if the marines are like you got like a fair point Swiss Army. like i said if you got a lot of shots and it's like 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 you said four and up man you're getting a lot of chances to hit that four and up army knife where they can do anything and they have a little tool for every situation just drown them in Guard bullets like a Swiss army knife that's about 10 times as big and attached to a big wooden stick that you just beat the shit out of people with. Your units, <laughs> they don't hit great, but you've got so many of them that you just take people out by drowning them in gunfire. As for collecting, the That's guard cool. is a little bit of a mixed bag. Their models are a bit older than I'd like. I personally think that they could use a decent amount of updates. Uh, they do get updated plenty rules-wise, but since they've got so many different kinds of units and so many Forge World options, a lot of them are a bit old and are showing their age. As for collecting them in the money side, they're pretty expensive. You're going for a horde army. There's a lot. So you have tons of models on the on the playing field. A lot to that paint said, too. I still do love them. I love their lore. Like I say, yeah, you gotta buy a crap ton of models with that, and then freaking you gotta paint all of them. That take take some time. Their design. I love the large swaths of infantry, and I personally think they are pretty fun. If maybe not the greatest army 
as a main army. The Adeptus Mechanicus are the war cult of Mars. They are very weird, and I've been told <laughs> how weird they are plenty before. Oh, yeah, but you did. They are probably one of the wackiest armies in the game, maybe along with Gene Steeler cults. The Adeptus Mechanicus have a lot of really weird back and forth styles when it comes to their gameplay. They're mainly a shooting army. I'd say they're about 75% shooting, 25% melee. However, they do have a couple dedicated melee units that can hurt pretty bad, but they're hmm. much lower on the tier list compared to the amount of gunfire they can bring. They hit pretty well. They generally hit on three, sometimes four depending on if they're using mechs or their own current bionics. They look uh, cool. But they do definitely have some of the wackier stuff. The entire army has a six up in vulnerability. Oh my abilities. god. So occasionally you get some pretty look how good the freaking model looks, man. Like I said, beautiful. It's just, mwah. these models are gorgeous. So I'm going to have to get me some. Clutch moments when you start taking damage and you roll a couple dice and you get a couple sixes. And you they don't look easy to paint though. Like I said, not at all. They're mainly a shooting army. I'd say they're about 75% shooting, 25% melee. However, they do have a couple dedicated melee units that can hurt pretty bad, but they're much lower on the tier list compared to the amount of gunfire they can bring. They hit pretty well. They generally hit on threes, sometimes fours, depending on if they're using Not bad. or their own current bionics. Uh, but they do definitely have some of the wackier stuff. The entire army has a six up in vulnerability save, so occasionally you get some pretty clutch moments when you start taking damage. And, and you that helps. A couple dice and you get a couple sixes and you can shrug off like full-on missiles and stuff. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> One of their base weapons is a really regular kind of crappy carbine, but if you roll a six for it, it does double damage, which can actually be ludicrously powerful at times. Oh, and yeah. You've got the weird robots, the Castellan robots, that they're these giant like World War One mech dudes that have a refractor field, <laughs> so if they block off cool, shots though. with their... Well, you know, reflector and vulnerable save. It'll launch back damage towards the enemy, which can be kind of crazy. They're they're very strange. They definitely are quite strange. Much more shooting over melee and definitely fun. It has some great looking characters. Belisarius Call might be one of the best models in the entire game. Dude, look how cool he looks. Like, looks so hard to paint. Like, look look at it though gorgeous super cool looking too a bitch to paint though oh my god and that does lead me to the collecting of the ad mech part gorgeous itself. uh they're actually getting a lot more newer updates lately they're actually one of the newest armies as well they came out only a couple years ago all their stuff is in plastic and it looks really damn good i personally think that they have that's super the cool looking in the entire game the only problem is that painting them is going to be a real bitch I would recommend yeah, trying to do some of the looks hard. stuff, like maybe the Dune Crawler, before you get into things like Call or a Tech Priest Dominus, because wow, is painting that going to be really damn hard? Cost wise, they yeah. are getting a bunch of new units, which is great, but generally when you get new units, they are very expensive, and whenever new stuff comes out, it tends to be a bit expensive. The army isn't a. I'm definitely not buying these first to paint. Horde, but it's also not an elite army, so they're probably in the mid ground when it comes to price range. However, I would recommend them to people who like some kind of wacky antics and some weird abilities and, and weaponry because Admech has been getting better and better as time goes on, and they're pretty dang cool to collect. So, mid tier price, maybe a little bit more expensive, but their scopes look great and they're very new, and I would highly recommend them. Next up, you've got the Adepta Sororitas, or also known as the Sisters of Battle, my mm. second favorite army, though I will be honest. They are really coming up to overtaking the Imperial Guard. They look I love cool. my guard. I love my love my Cadians. I love my 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 uh, Tempesta Scions. But the Sisters of Battle, they're really cool. Not only from a lore perspective, they're just insanely religious zealotous nuns. That already is just really dang cool. As for the team, yeah, look at their really cool models. Look good. Armies in the entire game that isn't a full-on melee army. They're a slow-moving, like advancing gunline army with some actually horrifying melee units and just some like ridiculous close-range firepower. The Sisters are probably one of the top three hardest armies to play, I'd say. They've got some really weird antics as well, kind of like Admech, maybe not quite as wacky. This army can be played in almost any way as well. You can do this a full gunline army or a full melee army or 50-50. Everything is viable. They look cool. They do require a lot of finesse and manipulation because... These
I love the fire on them and stuff. So yeah, man, might have to try them out one day. These are all low toughness sisters that do have good armor, but when you got a low toughness like they do, and they're not necessarily the most powerful when it comes to the actual punching, they can actually be shot off pretty quickly. So you need to be really smart on how you maneuver them because you've got a super short range, kind of squishy army at times. That can be a little bit challenging to get through. That being said, people are sleeping on the power of sisters. Let me be the first one to say it, you are all sleeping on how strong this army is. This army, if played well by a smart person, will crush you. As for the actual collecting of the models, sisters are the most recent army, at least as the time of making this video, who have had a complete army overhaul. For a while- I was just gonna say like, yeah, it's definitely every faction slash army is different when you play. So it's like when you learn a different one, it's like you're learning a total different way to play. Like I said, there's a lot of armies that specialize, like he said, in just melee. And there's a lot of armies, armies that specialize in shooting. And then there's some that's both and there's some that's all, man. And like being smart about how you play and learning is like, it, it's awesome. Like I said, you're going to learn differently how to play with each different army that you play. While there were no plastic sister models whatsoever, but the entire army, besides I think one unit, got a full overhaul. Looks good models. too. Everything models is are brand pretty. spanking new, and they probably have the best looking models in the entire game, in yeah. my opinion. They look incredible. That crazy gothic, uh, kind of Catholic nun look. I mean, come on, they're, they're tank is a pipe organ missile That's launcher. That's so cool it's a looking. pipe organ missile launcher. Sisters are one of the coolest looking armies in the entire game. They are a bit expensive though. That's the one downside is that because this entire army is brand new, it is brand new with a brand new price tag. So I personally love them. They might soon become my favorite army. I can't quite tell yet. Uh, they look great. They're a little expensive to collect. They have lots of different kinds of abilities, both melee and shooting. No psychic phase, but they do have some shenanigans to stop other people from using the psychic phase. They're pretty cool, but they are really hard to play and they take a lot of practice. So kind of up to you. Hmm. I would say not a very good starting army, but they are pretty neat. All right, Grey Knights, I heard you like the psychic fit. I think we're going to start, uh, stop here because the video is pretty long and sad and you get some sleep. Uh, guys, man, so far, man, this video has been freaking awesome. I have enjoyed it. We will do part two here soon. Like I said, more is to come. Like I said, I love Warhammer, but we have many, many other topics coming on the channel. Like I said, if you think there's any other topic that would be good for the channel, Warhammer or not, let me know. Let me know down below. Like I said, thank you for smashing the like button. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for leaving your comments. Like I said, we will see you guys in the next video.